All right, so a quick second video in our exploration of the foundations of historic globalization. So when we're trying to establish what is the foundation of historic globalization, uh, many people really focus on the three Gs, gold, God, and glory. And uh, in terms of looking at the three Gs, we just looked at the John Green video, looking at the Indian marketplace, which he calls the monsoon marketplace. And from that, we can get some details down. But let's first look at the definition provided by this online encyclopedia. They don't list it as gold, God, and glory. They um, list it as, as like a set. So uh, when you're looking at these three motivations, uh, I want you to think of the fact that they're overlapping. So for some people, they may be motivated by just one of the three. But for many, it, it may be a combination of the three. So historians often use the set, gold, God, and glory, in a standard shorthand, the three Gs, of sometimes referred to as the three Gs of imperialism, or for our course, we call it historical globalization. And uh, we're going to quickly define them. So when we say... Uh, the three G's that are motivating the people. The time period we're looking at is between 1400 and 1750. So we know Columbus discovers America at the end of the 15th century. So for about 100 years before that, people were already engaged in the age of exploration. They were just trying to go south to go east, rather than go west to go east. So a number of mainly Portuguese explorers <laughs> I didn't even have this thing out. Hey, it's me, it's me. A number of Portuguese explorers, um, they were traveling south uh, to try to get around the, anybody know the, the cape at the bottom of, of South Africa? The cape of, we have no South Africans in here today. So if I say the Cape of Good Hope, it could be, no one knows. Uh, maybe we should quickly Google that, because I'd hate to be telling us the, the wrong name, but the, uh, the journey around the Cape at the south of South, south Africa um, was quite treacherous. So they were trying to find a different way to get east. So many Portuguese sailors, Vasco da Gama and others, they traveled south to go east, and that's why you'll have Portuguese colonies along the southern, uh, both east and west coasts of Africa, mostly on the east side. So they can get into this Indian marketplace. But others um, decided, you know what, let's, let's try to go west to go east. You know, we don't think the world is flat. We think the world is, is, is a sphere. So eventually, if we go west far enough, we'll end up in the east. So that ends up in, inspiring them to, <laughs> I'm going to have to get this phone call. Uh, yeah, thanks, Sean. Hi, Sean. It's Russ, not Dean. Okay, are you, is it, yeah, go to the next guy, yeah. Even better, interrupt the class and you got the wrong guy. So um, back to the three Gs. So what we're seeing here is a lot of inspiration behind the gold part of gold, God, and glory, is that one of the primary catalysts, a catalyst is something that motivates you. So one of the primary catalysts here is that they want to take part in a trade hub that they're isolated from. So there's a lot of trade happening in the Indian Ocean, and yet the Europeans can't directly access it. So in the Indian Ocean, some key resources like ivory and indigo and spices and books and weapons are being traded. And because the Europeans are isolated from that trade, they're not progressing, they're, they're not uh, evolving at the same rate. So technologically, they're finding that they're starting to fall behind. So Europe's not the center of the world in the 13th and 14th and 15th centuries. Center of the world is in the Middle East. Center of the world is around the Indian Ocean, not around the Mediterranean Sea, not around the Pacific or the Atlantic. So the Europeans, they wanted to get into that because that's where the power was. The Europeans were marginalized and they understood that they had to get there directly. For too long, they'd been trading with the East through the Silk Road and when the East and West trade through the Silk Road, others, the middlemen, were profiting. And when you allow the others, the middlemen, to profit, then in a zero-sum theory, 
That's unacceptable to Europeans. Someone else is benefiting from your trade. So they want to be able to trade directly with the Indians, trade directly with the Chinese. So they need to find their way to India and to China. So the desire to take part in the Indian Ocean was a main catalyst behind this era of globalization because they were seeking gold. Now gold sometimes is gold, but sometimes gold is a metaphor for spices or for ivory or for indigo or for other resources that are valued at the time. Also, another thing that's being traded along the Indian Ocean is ideas. And one of the main ideas being spread in the 13th, 14th, 15th centuries is Islam. And just like the idea that middlemen were profiting and, and the Europeans were not, the spread of Islam and not the spread of Christianity was unacceptable to Christian Europe. So to Christian Europe, seeing this area of the world, this pocket of the world that's very powerful, not being introduced to Christ was unacceptable. So they had a, a, a service to God to get there so that they could evangelize in his name. So the spread of Islam, if, if you look at the spread of Islam on a map, it, uh, following the 7th century times of Muhammad, the, the spread of Islam is, is quite remarkable in North Africa. But now it's spreading into Asia. Now it's spreading into what becomes Indonesia. It's spreading into India and, and Pakistan and the Middle East. And, and this is unacceptable to Europeans because they're losing, they're losing that, 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 that battle, right? Another reason to try to jump into this, uh, this globalizing um, contest is for glory. So for some individual men, mostly men, some women, but mostly men, the reason why they at a micro level took part is because they wanted to be the first. So earlier today we talked about Christopher Columbus. And even today he's still glorified. You know, there's statues, there's squares, there's parks, there's holidays, because he was the first who accomplished something. Well, many understood that they wanted to be that first. They wanted to be the first Portuguese sailor to make their way around the Cape of Good Hope. They wanted to be the first European to travel like Marco Polo to China. They wanted that glory to, to be eternal. And in order to achieve that glory, they had to take part in this globalization uh, game, if you will. So there are three Gs happening here, gold, God, and glory. And, and gold is probably the most obvious, easiest to measure. Why are you doing this? Because we want to get rich. Because India has spices. Because China has resources that, that China has had a monopoly on for thousands of years, like silk. And if we can get those resources directly and bring them back to Europe, we will become rich. So gold is the most obvious to define. God's another one in the sense that there is a world con contest of, of the, not only the hearts and minds, but for the souls of mankind. You know, can we spread the, the light of Christianity? Can we evangelize? As there are places in the darkness of the world that uh, have not known scripture, or they're being introduced to, to religions that, that we are in competition with. So in a zero-sum theory, or even in a, just a religious uh, mission, we need to go. We need to go spread the word. And then finally, there's the glory one. We want, we want that passage to be named after us. We want that to be the Straits of Magellan. We want to be the first person who gets around the world to circumnavigate the globe. You know, you are living at the age of a, or at the beginning of a, of a new age of exploration for mankind. We're already talking about, you know, who will be the first people on Mars. And we're talking about the first generation to stay on Mars. And no doubt the first Martian generation will be a generation that will be remembered. That's one way to get schools named after you. You know, you could have the, the Will Cross Elementary School on Martian Base 1. Because, you know, maybe, maybe Mr. Cross back there goes to Mars. Maybe that's his desire. So just as some of you might be looking at the heavens and saying, I'd like to go to Venus. I'd like to go to Mars. I'd like to go ex explore the asteroid belt. I'd like to have something named after me. I'd like to 
to mine the, the gold and the copper and all those minerals off of the, those asteroids. There's wealth, there's glory, or maybe, maybe there's some other cause, some, some religious significance. This is what's motivating globalization in 1492 when Columbus goes. Gold, God, and glory. So in this unit, I want you to look for gold, God, and glory. We'll have some sources that we interpret, and we'll have to look at it and say, okay, what's being shown here? Is it gold, is it God, or is it glory? Why are they globalizing? So we know globalization is the interactedness, the interconnectedness of mankind. And now we're saying, we know what it is, but now we're saying, well, why are they doing it? And when we can explore why they do it, we can learn more about who we are. You know, what motivates us? So today we looked at Columbus, and uh, we learned that he's a divisive character. Another thing we need to look at before the end of class today is the concept of first contact. So Williams, from Airdrie, she has an excellent video here about cultural contact and the transformative power of it. So we're going to watch a quick video. I'll pause this. We'll watch a quick video. And I want you to think of the transformative power of first contact. Transformative power. Transformative is something that, that changes everything, right? It transforms. It changes. So, like today, if a big spaceship came to Earth and introduced themselves, and we had some kind of new Columbian exchange, maybe it's a you know, exchange named after whatever planet they're from. So, name a planet. The Neptunian exchange. So we have this Neptunian exchange, and during the Neptunian exchange, they introduce us to technologies we've never thought of. But they also introduce us to diseases we've never faced. So there'd be positive and negative consequences of this new round of interconnectedness. So that's the same thing we're seeing here with first contact, is the transformative power of cultural contact. And for some people, like the Beothic people of, of Canada's Newfoundland, the transformative power will be so much that the Beothic people will be eradicated. There's none left. So transformative power can be very negative at times. There's a Star Trek, the original series episode called The Apple, about the transformative power of first contact. Um, no, it's 50 minutes long. Do we have 50 minutes tomorrow morning to watch Star Trek together? Yes. So tomorrow morning we're going to watch Star Trek together. And when we watch Star Trek together tomorrow morning, uh, when we watch the Apple episode, and this is an episode that... Uh, I only have really thought of and put it in here because Mrs. Gackle told me about how it fits and once she told me about it, I'm like, yeah, you're right, this is an amazing fit. So I want you tomorrow, when we watch the video, to see how the story is just a, a reworking of the story of the Garden of Eden. You know, they're just, they've, they've reworked Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden to tell a story on another planet. I want you to look at the theme of population control, of cultural stagnation, we have to look at ethnocentrism. So a related concept when we have first contact is ethnocentrism is this idea that my ethnicity is better than yours, that my people are better than yours. You know, as an Irishman, we don't really have this. You know, we don't have a history of feeling better than others. Um, but some that we have came in contact with, like, I don't know, the British, they have a lot of ethnocentrism in the sense that, you know, the British truly felt that it was their destiny to, to control the planet and they do end up controlling about a quarter of it. And then we're gonna look at the idea of justification. So tomorrow we'll look at those uh, as we finish up this introduction into why people globalize. So we have the Williams video today to talk about cultural contact, and then we will move on to Star Trek next day.